Let's fire up the forge. Today, I'm making weapons and armor for my modular market stalls. Let's get into it. How's it going fellow crafters? Welcome to episode 10 of the Artist DM. For this craft, I drew inspiration from several crafters on the Tabletop Crafters Guild, using some of their techniques and combining them with my own. The three techniques I'm taking from the guild are using combs to make swords, using fake nails to make shields, and using bread twist tabs to make axes. But I will put my own spin on all of those. So now that credit's given, let's head over to the table and I'll show you how I made all my weapons and armor. First up is the cutlass. To get that characteristic curved blade, I used a disposable dental pick. The pick widens as you go farther from the tip, so I had to trim that down with an X-Acto knife. To make the handguard, I just used some excess plastic from the bread tab, and for the handle, I used a segment of a whittled down toothpick. And to connect the pieces, I used super glue. This project's gonna require a lot of super glue and a lot of patience. Once the glue had dried, I could set this aside for when I'm going to detail all the swords. Now on to the rapier. I purchased a variety pack of combs from Dollar Tree. This was important because it gave me different widths when it came to the teeth of the combs. I could use the wider ones for claymores or broadswords, and I could use the thinner ones for rapiers or longswords. For the handguard, I used half of a foam pellet, the same kind I used in my spider boss video. To make sure the super glue didn't melt it, I coated it in Mod Podge. When connecting the blade and the handle, I kind of struggled with this because they'd like to give or the glue would come off, and I finally realized I had to coat the entire pellet in super glue. This made it hard and rigid, and I could then glue the pieces to it securely. I also added baking soda to the super glue to give it a very strong bond. And with that, the main structure of the rapier was done, and it could be set aside for the detailing phase. Alright, now for my personal favorite. The long sword and the great sword with the curved cross guards. To make the curved cross guard, I used the plastic rim from a water bottle. This comes with a natural curve, and because it's soft plastic, it's easy to trim down to the appropriate size. Once I secured it to the piece of the comb and the toothpick, I then saturated it in super glue to harden it up. I then wiped away any excess glue with the toothpick to make sure it didn't pool in the corners. And like the others, these were set aside for detailing later. To make straight cross guards, I cut out strips from the excess plastic on the bread tabs. I could then cut it down to the appropriate size. I was going for somewhat of a Roman short sword style here. Now for the pre-mentioned details. To create the majority of the pommels, I used milliput. For some, I just rolled up a sphere, but for others, I created a sphere and then applied gentle pressure with a flat surface. This made it into a flat circular shape that could be used as a pommel. This gives the swords that classic European aesthetic. Make sure you have a blade on hand to scrape off the milliput. You can attach these either perpendicular to the hilt or parallel like I did here to get that European style. Before I attached the milliput, I let it dry and moved on to the other part of detailing. I wanted to add some detail to some of the hilts, and to do so, I used fishing line. I used fishing line because it was small enough. Twine or string is a bit too large. This would mimic leather being wrapped around the hilt. After a few swords, I noticed that it was best to have a little bit of space between the line. When you're winding it around the handle, I would leave about a millimeter or so in between. I wanted to retain the high and low points so the wash could get in between the fishing line. And because we're working on such a small scale, 
it's easy for the paint to fill in the low points. So having that little bit of space helps the wash get in there and the paint not fill it. Because the fishing line is clear, it's hard to see the spacing here, but after the wash and the painting phase, you'll be able to see it. After the mill putt had dried, I could finish the rapier. To make the side hand guard, I used a brass ring from the jewelry section in Walmart. These are really useful items for crafting. I use these for door handles all the time. To connect it, I just used baking soda and super glue. During the painting phase, all these pieces would be painted gold and I would tie them all together. Now that the swords are done, it's time for the axes. To make the blades, I'm going to use the bread tabs. I could find two kinds in my grocery store. The longer rectangular one pictured here has smaller ends that are more in scale with the 28mm miniature. If you use the larger ones, it's not really that noticeable, but when it comes to hand axes, having the smaller ends is an absolute must. The only product I could find with that tab was bread from Pepperidge Farm. Let's start with the halberd. I start off by etching a line around the toothpick, close to the point. Everything above this line is going to be the metal spike, and below it is going to be hewn wood. So I'm going to whittle down the wood below the line. Where the blade's going to be connected, there's a slight angle to the toothpick. So when I make the cut, I do it at a slight angle to match it up. I didn't worry too much about this, I just eyeballed it, and it turned out fine. To make the tab look more like a sharp blade, I went in and carved the outer edge. I glued the blade just above the line that I etched in. I then trimmed down a tooth from one of the combs, and attached that with baking soda and super glue. This created that spike you see on a lot of halberds. In the background you can see my mini there. It's good to have one on hand to stay in scale. At this point I decided I wanted to make it look like the metal was wrapping around the pole. So to do this I carefully put some super glue and then applied baking soda to build up the texture. After the baking soda was applied I hit it again with super glue to smooth it out. And this worked pretty well. And like before I used a toothpick to control the super glue. hand axe was incredibly simple to make. I just cut a segment of toothpick, whittled that down, and then applied one of the small ends from the bread tabs. For detail, I added fishing line, like I did with the great sword. To make the great axe, I used the tabs with the large ends. I simply just attached it to the end of a whittled down toothpick. And to add further decoration, I used some excess plastic and made a square decorative end. Once all the weapons are assembled, you can take them outside, black bomb them, and paint them up. Here they are with all the base coats done. For this project, I used miniature paints. To accent the edge of the blades, I hit all the outer edges the lighter silver. To bring out that detail in the hilts where I added the fishing line, I added Agrax Earthshade, and this really made it pop. And here with this comparison, you can see why it's important to properly space the fishing line. On the great sword, I spaced it properly, but on the rapier, it was too close together. I then went through and added some black wash to all the nooks and crannies to further accent the shapes. And with that, I was calling it good for painting. I made the hammer next to the halberd before I started filming. To make the hammer head, all I did was carve it out from foam and then attach it on the toothpick. With all the weapons painted up, it was time to glue them to the table. I made sure to decide how I wanted to arrange these before I started gluing. And I should have sprayed my foam table with Krylon matte varnish before I glued these. I read on forums that some matte varnishes can take away from the shine of your metallic paints, but in theory it shouldn't. That being said, if it did dull the blades, you could go in with a paint on gloss varnish to bring out that shine again. But for now, I'm just leaving the table without the varnish. And 
there we go, one weapons table, ready for a market stall, or ready to be put on some dungeon tiles. Alright, now for the armor. For the round shield, I just used a button and glued it on the table as is. For the more rectangular shields, I used fake fingernails. I just black bonded them with spray paint, covered that with acrylic black paint, and then went over with a couple coats of metallic paint. But for the helmets and the chainmail, we'll take a closer look. To instantly get that chainmail pattern, I'm using pipe filters. You can get these on Amazon for incredibly cheap, and I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. I use these brass ones, but you can get steel ones for only a couple bucks. Start by turning it so the mesh is at a 45 degree angle, and then draw a rough shape of a shirt. Then cut that out with scissors. You can't use a knife on this one. Once you cut out the shape, trim off any excess strands. Once you're satisfied with the shape, bend it around a bit so it looks like it has more material beneath it. You don't want it looking perfectly flat. It's not the perfect solution for making chainmail, but for as easy and cheap as it is, I think it's a great representation. The pipe filters weren't taking spray paint well, so I tried using the matte varnish first. The matte varnish acted like a primer. After the matte varnish, I applied black acrylic paint, and it binded very well. I tried a couple techniques for painting, and I got it down by the third set of chainmail. You want a dry brush with a dark silver, and then dry brush the high points with filigree silver. I applied black washes to the first two, but it would only fill in certain parts of the mesh, and it actually looks best if you leave it without a wash. Alright, now onto the half helms. To create the main structure of the helmet, I used the foam pellets that I used before. I just cut them slightly beyond the half mark point. Then to make a nose guard, I used a piece of cereal box. I pre-bent the piece of cereal box, and then applied it with tacky glue. Super simple. I didn't think of it at the time, but you could poke holes along that bottom edge. After a black wash, this could look like rivets. To paint these, I put them on pins, and did a base coat of black acrylic paint. I painted the main structure with chainmail silver, and then painted the nose guard with filigree silver. Painting it with a lighter silver would accent it more when it's on the table. And finally, I added a black wash to the helmets. Once the paint dried, I used super glue to add the chainmail and the helmets to the table. And there you have it. Some expansions on some great techniques taken from our awesome community from the Tabletop Crafters Guild, and a few of my own that you can add to your arsenal. Hopefully you found this video useful, entertaining, or inspiring. And of course, that annoying YouTube stuff. If you like what you saw here, subscribe, hit that like button, and if you have any thoughts, comment down below. These two tables were suggested by viewers. In the description below, there are Amazon affiliate links. If you'd like to help out the channel with no cost to you, consider clicking through those links and making your Amazon purchases. Every little bit helps, and it's greatly appreciated. But until next time, thanks for watching, and happy crafting. Potions to make you as strong as a giant, or as swift as a cobra. Weapons and armor here. Sharp enough to kill a dragon. Uh, carrots to, to give you nutrition.